nobody ever give a hand out For the stress, talking grams loud Cut them off, take the head out Broke talk, what it's said about Been fly, take the air miles It's over, throw in the damn town Move the game, I'm a cash cow Feeling like I'm the man now Nobody ever give a hand out For the stress, talking grams loud Cut them off, take the head out Broke talk, what it's said about Been fly, take the With the 37th pick in the 1996 NBA draft The Denver Nuggets select Jeff McInnes, University of North Carolina. A long time coming, a long wait for Jeff McInnes to hear his name called the North Carolina point guard. Surprising to an extent. You think he can help somebody? How do you like him? Oh, oh no, this guy's got talent. Uh, this guy can score. He's an ex. He just saw his best move right there. He's a terrific spin move guy who has a game, the 8 to 10 to 15 foot game. That's there. He's a good three point shooter. He, this guy's got a lot of talent. Denver was interested in him early. I mean, they've been talking about trying to get him, and look look where he falls to them when you think about it at 37. But, you know, Nick Van Exel, Jeff Hornacek, we have a long line of guys. Cliff Robinson. What's going on, everybody? It's Tay Wiz reporting live and direct for the Man Cave as usual. I'm here with Jeff McGinnis. What's up, man? So the question is, you the AAU coach of Team Charlotte. How you get your boys prepared mentally? Mentally, uh, I just go off experiences, things I've been through. Um, every player is different. Correct. I think you gotta motivate some different. Um, but my guys, uh, some of the guys that get under recruited, mm -hmm. so I use the recruiting tool as a motivation. Uh, you know, all these guys around you, you know, beat them and they get recruited by whatever school, and you get this. So I use, you know, their their own success as their motivation. Now we here in Charlotte. We know Dale Curry and Steph Curry. We know the guys just came down to win the NBA championship. No, you're coaching your son up to go in the same footsteps as, as you. So what's, how do you want him to go out there and approach the game different than what you did? I just want him to play hard. Um, the main thing with these kids nowadays is playing hard. To me, my son is playing hard. He got all the skills, he's smart. He just got to put it together. And that's the biggest thing for me is just putting it together with him. Once it comes together, I'll be fine. Whatever the results are, I'll be cool with it. Because I'm prepared for it. That's all you do. Uh, the question everybody wants to answer, who the king is trying to You or Steph? Uh, Steph got it. I give it to him. He got three. He got three rings. He the king. He so, the king. He the I'm from Cleveland. And I know you from Charlotte. I know you played for the Cavaliers. I know we've seen the shoe 704. Right. Matt Nasty. <laughs> he was out there playing for the Cavaliers. Now, the crazy thing is, if you was out there playing for the Cavaliers, the Portland Trail Blazers. Now playing them different cities. Now, which one is your favorite city to play in? Uh, my favorite city probably be, um, I love Cleveland, honestly. Uh -huh. I just like the, it reminds me of Charlotte a lot. Right. This guy, you know, they got the the, the urban spots, the urban size. Um, I really enjoy it. I, I just like Cleveland. The fans get behind you. They mm -hmm. boo you when you're messing up, too. So they was just real sports people there in Cleveland. Just like going to Browns games, going to you know, Cleveland Indians games, just seeing the, the effect of the crowd. They love it. So you play, not like I keep telling you, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> my favorite college is North Carolina Tar Heels basketball team. Now, I remember the days, you, all them guys out there, you the reason I played basketball, to be honest with you. Just watching it, because Ohio State basketball team at that time, who was it? I didn't pick up towards the right. I see you guys, it's Carter, all them guys. Right. You know, the right. history is long. Right. Dean Smith. Right. A lot of people don't know who Dean Smith is. Right. So, how was it playing for Dean Smith? Oh, uh, he's a father figure, first off. Um, I mean, like I said, I was a hothead out of Charlotte. And for him to come to my neighborhood and grab me up and bring me to North Carolina, um, I, I wanted to go to NC State when I was a kid. It was a day until I met Dean Smith personally. Right. I was done. I was like, I, I knew where I was going to school left from the day I met him. Um, he's just been inspirational. Like you said, you saw what he did. He was on his deathbed. He signed a check for $200 to every player, to every letterman that played with him. Wow, so everybody that played with him got a check for $200. So he was on his deathbed when that happened. So that's just the kind of guy he was. So even though you're not in the game, do, it, do you still keep up with some of your former NBA guys you oh, yeah. played with? Uh, I talk to a lot. I talk to all of them. Most of my guys in the big three now, they okay. older, uh, Monzi Wells. I still talk to She, Stackhouse, Donald Williams, mm -hmm. Derek Fells. We all, we all in touch. Um, you know, other dudes from other teams, Cliff Robinson. I talked to Scott. He texted me the other day. Right. And so, yeah, we all, we all pretty much stay in touch. So one more question before you get out here. I know you still got to practice with the kids. What is one goal you want your team to accomplish this year? We know, of course, you want to accomplish the championship. Outside the championship, though, what do you want to see them to Well, do? last year, all my seven seniors signed Division I scholarships to college, all yeah. my seven seniors. So I think the goal has changed for me to 
not so much winning. We win because we do it right. But I think now we um, just get my kids in college. And um, I think winning does that and just preparing them the right way, how to play. And that's the key now. I think the, the goal has switched to getting these boys in college. So we know you're not in the league no more. What, what is one of your favorite teams you like to watch on a consistent um, basis? I just like to watch the game, the good game of basketball. Actually, I like watching uh, Brad Stevens because I, I like the way they execute. A, like, a great coach. Yeah, a great coach, coach. A great coach. But he was like that at Butler. People don't realize that. Where he was. Butler was real good. Him and Shelvin Mack and right. Gordon right. Hayward. They had, a, they had a good team. Um, now, if you was playing right now, what player today reminds you of yourself? Today? Um, uh, man, let me see. Uh, a lot of all the point guards shooting now, so I like to pass a little bit as a right. point guard. But I mean, all the point guards are scoring now. I would say, uh, I think Markel folks, but y'all ain't really seen him yet. Right. But when you see Markel folks, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. He got he a big guard, he got a little twitch in his game. And everybody think he really can't shoot. He makes shots when the games, you know, when the games on the line. Yeah, he he makes shots. Country. Yeah, he'll be up and coming player. So I say Markel folks, big guard, kind of twitchy to his game. I think I can pass better, man. I probably can pass the ball a little better than Markel. <laughs> Uh, we're going to end it right there. Jeff McGinnis coming in live from 704 West Charlotte Grant, all the way to UNC to the NBA. One thing probably Jeff didn't know, that he averaged nine and a half points per game with 5,347 points and 2,246 assists. Now, that's your gym. That's Jeff McGinnis coming live and direct from the Man Cave. I'm Tay Wiggs. I'm out here. Peace. Peace. Hey, bro,